Welcome to Cape Henlopen State Park, where each year thousands of visitors come to enjoy the sun, sand, and surf that help shape this uncommon landscape. Here, miles of pineland trails weave through the sandy terrain, rimmed by six miles of beautiful beaches. A paved trail, three miles long, loops the park and offers clues to visitors about the park's historic past. Herring Point offers a breathtaking panoramic view of the Atlantic Ocean off the southeastern coast of Delaware. And while this vista has not changed in the last 70 years, the reason for scanning the waters off this coastline certainly has. For before it was Cape Henlopen State Park, this landscape housed thousands of U.S. Army troops, men and women stationed here at this strategic location to protect the U.S. mainland from enemy invaders during the Second World War. Then, Cape Henlopen State Park was called Fort Miles. Fort Miles was one of the largest seacoast fortifications in the United States. In response to mounting tension in Europe, construction began in 1938 when local citizens helped the 52nd and 261st Coast Auxiliaries to build rail lines to ship the mighty guns, building equipment, and supplies onto the sandy stretch. By 1940, a fence surrounded the land and military guards patrolled the perimeters. Soon, troops began to arrive and were first housed in tents. Blustery cold winters and dry hot summers, complete with insects and odors from a nearby fish processing plant, made for rough going for the soldiers who manned a range of huge artillery along the shoreline. As the conflict in Europe between Allied troops and the Nazi army escalated, trouble was also brewing in the Pacific. When the Japanese bombed the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii on December 7, 1941, the United States was inevitably drawn into the Second World War. Then President Franklin D. Roosevelt explained the ominous events to the American public in a famous radio broadcast. Yesterday, December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. He asked for the country's full support, and the nation responded. There was no television or internet back in 1941. People got their information by reading newspapers, listening to the radio, and going to the movies where newsreels and patriotic cartoons marshaled public support for the war effort. What was that? What's cooking? Extra! Read all about it! War declared! Extra! Read all about it! Extra! Extra! War declared! As the war in Europe, and now the Pacific, escalated, troops stationed at Fort Miles settled in and attended to their duties of protecting the Delaware coastline. It was an important job, as this strategic stretch of water could also provide enemy access to important American cities and the industries located there, including Wilmington, Philadelphia, and Camden. In fact, Fort Miles was one of eight Team commands in the nation charged with guarding important ports. The work demanded long hours and an arsenal of powerful artillery, including 16-inch guns, the largest guns in the U.S. weapon inventory in World War II, housed in great bunkers disguised as sand dunes. The largest of these great guns was capable of firing at targets some 25 miles away. 
Coordinates for targets were calculated in plotting rooms, informed by observers deployed in the observation towers. Bearing 250. Bearing 250. Range 450. And communicated to duty officers and men who then loaded these mighty weapons with shells stored in nearby ammunition storage rooms. Special boats and larger ships worked with troops dedicated to deploying and maintaining huge mines that were planted in the harbor to deter enemy submarines, all top secret. When not commanding their posts at the fort, young troops needed to be housed, fed, and trained. Once again, the War Department in Washington enlisted the help of cartoon characters like Private Snafu to communicate important concepts while entertaining troops young and older. Now Pooper Man! Hide down! I'm trying to do some brain work. How do you expect a guy to study with all that racket going on? Study? Nuts. When I get it By the time it was completed, there were some 2,000 military and civilian personnel stationed at Fort Miles. Mealtime alone was a huge production, and history records that food was good. The overwhelming majority of forces were men, but many women also worked at the fort. And when not on duty or being trained, there were long hours that needed to be filled in order to maintain morale and help pass the long days, weeks, and months away from home. Football and basketball games, even boxing matches were organized. Fort Miles had an orchestra and plenty of shows put on by amateur soldier actors anxious to ham it up for their commanding officers and buddies. One of the most popular leisure activities at Fort Miles included the dances held at the post that allowed wives, husbands, and sweethearts living nearby to visit this community that was otherwise top secret and off limits to all civilians not engaged in official wartime work projects. The most dramatic event to occur at Fort Miles during its wartime operation between 1940 and 1945 happened when a German submarine appeared off the coast of Delaware on May 14, 1945. Surrendering to U.S. naval forces in a thick bank of fog, U-858 was the first enemy warship to surrender to the United States homeland since the War of 1812. Commanded by 27-year-old German Captain Tilo Boda, the crew of 57 men were taken ashore for processing at Fort Miles. The Second World War was drawing to a close. Allied troops had defeated the enemy both in Europe and the Pacific. Troops who had survived the five-year, often brutal conflict would be at last coming home. Its cannons now obsolete. Fort Miles would become a training center for subsequent conflicts before part of it was returned to the state of Delaware. Over the next several decades, this once strategic landscape was transformed into Cape Henlopen State Park. Today, Fort Miles has been rediscovered by historians and volunteers who recognize its significance and are working to transform this historic site into one of the best World War II museums in the country. We invite you to come and explore newly restored buildings and exhibits and to walk through a proud time in our Delaware and American history. <laughs>